been a week. It's been a week. So I had to, I, George and I decided that we were just going to jump the gun and we were going to bring your, some yarn in and put it in the shop. Um, unfortunately, uh, we had to use my yarn in my stash. So I've completely dismantled um, my yarn room and we've completely dismantled the shop. I'll tell ya, I'm praying to God that this is gonna work because this was a lot of work to do. Um, the shop is a mess right now. I, I, my sister's at the shop because there was a bit of a cluster this morning. I'm, uh, I'm driving all the way back home because we forgot some clips to a shelf and George can't come out because he's got carpet cleaning jobs. So I'm uh, driving all the way back home to find those clips. I tell you guys, I feel like I'm having a breakdown. Like I'm just, I'm about to cry. Nothing seems to be going right. And, you know, with everything going on, there's only so much a person can take, you know. George is hanging on by his fingernails, you know, trying to make everything work out. And I'm, I was talking to the, um, his name is Steve. He's at the British shop that's across from me. And he was explaining, like they, a, a couple of the shops in there have been open since 2019, just before COVID. They opened up and then COVID hit. And they struggled all the way through COVID to try and keep their shops open. A lot of shops in there didn't make it. Um, oh, no, still bright. <laughs> um, a lot of shops didn't make it. There's only three, four stores in there that have made it, um, but they're still struggling. And so anyways, I was talking to Steve and I said, so my, I said, I can't believe that you guys made it through COVID and are still standing. I says, we're not even in COVID and I'm struggling. She, and he explained that, you know, it takes time for people to get to know that you're there and all that kind of stuff. And he says that they haven't, they haven't paid themselves the whole time that they've been open. They haven't made any money to pay bills or anything like that. They've been paying off the renovations that they did, the expansions, because they expanded a couple of times. Um, because before COVID, it was everything was doing really, really well. So all these shops expanded. Well, now they're paying off uh, their the the uh, owners paying them for the expansions that they did. And that's pretty much all they've been doing is just, you know, paying off their stuff. So I'm going, you know, I'm kind of glad that I didn't expand right now because I want to have like a one season there to figure out what's going on. <clears throat> and so now I'm bringing in the yarn and we're going to see how that does. And if it goes well, then I'll bring in a big order and I'll figure out what to do later. But for now, we're just going to use up the one wall in the shop for yarn and uh, play it by ear. I want to make some kits um, and I also want to do some uh, craft classes 
So I'm going to talk to the owner and say, hey, would you guys be willing to rent out a little, a, you know, a space for a day or whatever for a few hours, like every couple of weeks or once a month or whatever, so I can do these craft classes. Um, I'm, I know they will. Oh, excuse me. <sighs> but, um, I mean, if there's nobody in those spaces, then they're going to, they don't, they're not making income. Like, and they're not generating any income from them. So why not rent out the space for, for a class? So, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, so then I want to make, like, do, like, wreath classes or um, centerpiece classes and all of that. <clears throat> and then I'll also have the kits for sale. But, uh, yeah, so that's kind of my plan. But we'll see how it goes. Um, I was planning on doing some videoing of the dismantling of my room the dis and the dismantling of the shop and the setting up and all of that. But to be honest, it's too hard to, um, to film all that while we're doing it because then I got customers in the shop. I don't want to get the customers on camera. You know, um, and it's just a, a total cluster. So, sorry guys. <laughs> Maybe I'll uh, do some videoing after it's done. But um, for right now, that's how it sits. So, yeah. Okay, I guess I'll talk to you guys later. are you? So I'm at work, obviously, and I haven't talked to you guys in quite a while. I'm so sorry about that. Um, I've been having a bit of a go, as you guys probably saw in my last video. And we've been trying to get a grip on things. So I haven't been on camera because I've just kind of been depressed and all that kind of stuff. But, um, things are going better at the shop. Uh, things are starting to pick up a little bit. Um, I've been doing posts uh, for the yarn <clears throat> that I brought into the shop. And uh, I think things are starting to look up. Um, I had some customers come in today and buy some of my plushies and my amigurumi and now I have no little whales <laughs> so now I guess I'm going to be making whales um, I made four pickles uh, at home yesterday on my day off I'm making another one I'm in the process of making another one um, George is going to be picking up some ink for me for my printer because I ran out and I couldn't make my little tags for my pickles so that's why I didn't bring them to work today um, so I'm doing that and I got a oh, scratch um, I got a new uh, not new but a used POS machine for my for my store and the reason was because I wanted to use a scanner, barcode scanner for the yarn. Found out that the barcode scanner that I got off Amazon isn't compatible. So I gotta figure that out. And I forgot that the POS um, that I got for like this, oops. This is the square tap machine. Um, and then the, hang on, I'll show you the POS. This is the square terminal. I'm watching a, <laughs> a channel. Uh, Complicated Knots is the name of the channel. Um, 
So I got this and realized when I took care of a couple of customers this morning that it doesn't print receipts like my other machine. I've got my, I've got this one that I bought um, from Square. It's like a $300 machine. Um, this one prints receipts. So I don't have a printer for this yet. Um, so I figure I'm going to use the POS system at the shop and then I'm going to <clears throat> use the other one if I decide to do craft fairs and stuff. So, um, yeah. So trials and tribulations of being a business owner, I guess, eh? So anyway, I'm going to finish this pickle and then I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, I am started. Mm -hmm. I've got a few projects going. I, uh, hang on. So I started making a sweater. Okay. I'm pulling out my stitches. So I started making a sweater. And this is Angela from My Precious Yarnery's pattern. Um, I'll leave her link down below. Uh, it's the hooded, easy hood, hooded, oh, I always get it wrong. Anyways, it's her hooded pattern. So what I'm using is my Karen Latte in the cream color. And then I'm using this, I found this in my stash. Oh, oh, and I just dropped my hook. Nice. This is the Big Twist uh, Classic, which I believe is discontinued. This color is amazing, but I don't have any more. What I was thinking, I, I don't know what the heck I was thinking. Oh, my furls is on the floor. Um, so I don't know what I was thinking, but I don't have any more of that. And I really don't think that this is going to make a full sweater. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I just don't even know what I was thinking. But anyway, we'll see how that goes. See how far I can get before I run out. <sighs> so, anyway, so that's what I'm working on today. So, let's finish up the goal. Wednesday and it's been a busy morning. It's been really busy. Um, I'm loving it. <laughs> I sold a bit of yarn but my amigurumi's um, plushies are going like crazy. I, I can't keep up. I'm just like oh my goodness. Making a chicken. I've got an Elvis chicken. I started using this um, yarn. <clears throat> it's Bernat Blanket. Uh, no, it's not. It's Bernat Chenille. And I just loved the colors. And I thought it, <clears throat> excuse me, I thought it would make a really good um, turtle. But I ended up making a chicken. And then I made the plume and the tail in black. I tell you, it looks just like Elvis. <laughs> so, here's a picture. 
and the kids are going crazy over that and my pickles. So I'm in the process of making more. I don't have any more of the green granite blanket. My Michaels just doesn't seem to carry that kind of stuff. Um, it sells really quickly, even at $14.99 freaking ball. But um, <clears throat> once I'm able to put an order in with your inspirations, um, then I'll bring in what I need for my, my plushies. So, but, yeah, just making a chicken. Oh, and by the way, thanks, Jojo. <laughs> Joe's web. She's been wearing her hair twisted and I've been bugging her saying, I need to know how you do that. And uh, then I just mucked around with my hair this morning and except I, I did mine in pigtails because I can't seem to figure out how to keep it back like that. So I just kept them in pigtails. But I tell you, I don't know what's going on with me, but I have been sweating so bad and I don't it's not menopause right like it's, I can tell when it's a hot flash because it starts from deep within and then it just permeates outwards but this is different this is just like one minute I'm fine the next minute sweat just sweat <clears throat> so I don't know if there's different types of hot flashes or whatever but I'm, I'm past all that I don't understand it but anyway um it's like air conditioned in here and I'm still just like <clears throat> and then I figured out that I need to get the hair off my neck so um, that's what I did today I just took my hair off my neck and I've been fine so yeah my hair's at that point it's growing out you guys I can actually put it in pigtails <laughs> so anyways let's make a chicken food for thought for those of you that make amigurumi, I bought these on Amazon. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Dave just came to walk the dog. <laughs> it's so nice having someone that comes to the shop and walks the Bailey. It's, it's wonderful. And all I do is I go and buy him a coffee at the coffee shop. So anyway, so these, there's three sizes. Um, there's a medium size that... I haven't got here but there's three sizes in a pack and these are for safety eyes Whoops! so I've got my safety I had my safety eyes in here okay so you get your safety eye and you put whoop, hang on put the back at your safety eye and then you take this and you push down in it. I put it on my hand, I push it, and it locks it in. And then you don't have to mess around with trying to get the safety eyes in properly. These things just it pushes and it clicks them in. If you're using, um, the eyes that I usually use are from Dark Side Eyes, and they've got the cup on them. Um, they go around the safety eye and those are really hard to get on so using this to push it on makes it so much easier so much easier so yeah if you can get these on Amazon they're called um, I think it's called the safety eye tool uh, it'll make your life so much easier now I gotta figure out where I have to put this eye <laughs> Pro tip, can't even hang on, is that these are lots of dots, hooks. I got these from Angela. Hi Angela. Angela from My Precious Yarnery, she gifted a, a set of these to me. I, t 
Australia, I use them for all my amigurumi stuff. Ugh, fibers everywhere. These have the um, point on the end. These help so much when you're using like the velvet yarn, like the chenille or the um, uh, Bernat blanket and stuff like that where it's hard to see your stitches. This really gets into where you need it to go. Um, I also learned a new stitch. It's called the invisible decrease. I may end up using that now for um, any of my clothing that I make, like the sweaters and stuff, because man, it's cool. And it's, um, I think it makes a difference. It doesn't show the decrease at all. And it's basically all you're doing is you're picking up the front um, the front loop. You know how you've got, oh, let's see if you can see this. Yeah, great, thanks a lot. You got your front loop and your back loop. You pick up the front loop on the one, you pick up the front loop on the other, and you pull your yarn through, and then finish your, your single crochet. It makes a big difference. I love it. So, and with this hook, see the, in um, the throat, it's really deep in the throat. It sounded bad. <clears throat> anyway, um, it catches the yarn really well. So if you're if you're going, like I always flip my hook, and I go underneath to grab the the yarn, and then you go to the next one, and you grab the next one. It makes a big difference. I guess you don't have different sizes. I don't know what it is today, like lately, but cats seem to be the big ticket item this year. I don't know why. You know, I bought, I got those cat change purses and the dog change purses. Cat ones are gone. The dog ones are still sitting here. So, my cat earrings, gone. I don't understand. Like, usually it's dog stuff that goes crazy. Now it's cat stuff. I don't know. It's weird. You know? I never understood before I started making amigurumi how much fiber fill actually goes into a stuffed animal. Like, I had no idea. This stuff just, it squishes down so much. And the amount of fiber fill you have to put in something so small, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. But the boxes of fiber fill that you can get at Michael's for $28 or whatever it is. I don't know how much it is in the States, but they're $28 here. That box goes a long way. I have to say, like, I thought about getting fiber fill on Amazon and everything, and then my friend says, no, 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 what is with my hair? Um, my friend said, no, 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 go to Michael's and get the box. And I thought, eh, I don't know, that's not going to go very far, I don't think. It does. It goes really far. So that makes me happy. Something so satisfying about stuffing a chicken. <laughs> I'm sick. I'm, I'm terribly sick. <laughs> I'm not, a, I'm a very rough, um, rough knitter. Like, I, I, it's not polished, fine work. Yeah. I just knit to do the pattern. Mm -hmm. And I don't care. Yeah. I don't even want it after, and I don't <laughs> care uh, you know, what's going to yeah. happen to it. But I just like it in, uh, in finding out the pattern. You like the process. Yes, I yeah. do. Yeah. I'm, there's two kinds of knitters and crocheters. The one that likes the process of doing it, and the ones that like the finished product. Yeah, mine isn't finished. Yeah. None yeah. of mine. Yeah. Anything I make, I, uh, I just made a, a rudel. Oh. <laughs> because the, I just happened to have the yarn, leftover yarn, and I was just sitting there, and the pattern was there, and I... I just didn't want it to do this. Yeah, just to yeah. find out what the hell they're going to do. Yeah. And I'm, it's very I'm, rough 
Nikki. Yeah. But I like it. <laughs> I, I, I like the looks of them yeah. being rugged instead of so, yeah. you know. Yeah. I'm the finished project type of person. Mm -hmm. The process doesn't interest me all that much. It's seeing what I've created. That's what yeah. what I enjoy. You know, so, yeah, it's... It, but it it's just keeps you busy. Oh, yeah. 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 It's hard, though, that now that I've got the shop, it's hard to find time to be able to do it. Yeah. So that's why I sit here mm -hmm. and, and make my stuff. And um, like, none of them <laughs> sit do embroidery. No, no. That's yeah. a real thing in the past, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Although I did have a, a customer come in the other day and ask if I had... Um, embroidery needles and punch needles there's that um, what's it called velvet punching or something and it's they make stuff like this but they take um, unrefined yarn and they punch it in to make a, an animal or something right I, I no, can't no, do that's that new to me yeah I can't I can't figure that out thanks for the yarn <laughs> oh wow and so I just knit at whatever I got like I, I don't use them you know, I don't get the pattern first and, and buy the proper yarn and the yeah. proper needles. I I do it backwards. I do the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I never I never buy yarn with the intention of a actual pattern. No, me or either. I buy it because I like it. It's it, pretty, yeah. and I'll figure it out later. <laughs> yeah. So I've got rid of a lot of pieces of, of those yarns. Uh, and just like doing that crazy uh, uh, animal that I made the other day, that got rid of a whole ball. Yeah. You know. Okay, so I don't know if I told you guys about <clears throat> this little lady. Oh, I think I did. Yeah, I did. The little la old lady that comes in, she's like in her 80s or 90s or something. And she had those bags of pure alpaca. Well, it ends up that it, it had wool in it, and I couldn't use it, so that was her. And she comes in every once in a while, and she has a little chat with me. And uh, so now she just came in, and she asked me, she says, I remember way back, I used to make my own pom-poms, but I can't remember how to do it anymore. So I sat down with her, and I showed her. Because she remembers doing this. Like, so I had nothing to work with here. But I explained to her that how you have to have the the piece of, you know, piece of string. And you had to have it in here. And then you go around and around and around. And then you cut it. And she's like, oh, right. She says, I remember something about that. So I told her. I just blew her mind. And I says, do you know that they have pom-poms now that are made of, like, a fake fur? that have a snap on them. So all you have to do is sew the snap onto your hat and then the pom-pom has the other part of the snap and you just snap it on. Oh, oh. <laughs> it was so cute. She's like, oh really? And I says, yeah, I'll bring some in. And then it occurred to me that there's probably a lot of people that are gonna be coming in that are gonna be making hats at Christmas time. And they're going to want pom-poms. So now I'm thinking, I'm going to have to carry pom-poms in my shop. <laughs> I totally forgot before I stuff this. I had to take all the stuffing out. I totally forgot to melt the back of the eyes. So, I'll just show you guys. See, I've got these here. So what I do... I got my trusty little hammer. And got my lighter. You have to be very careful with this. But I take the lighter. And I just lightly melt the post. And then I take the hammer. It. And it flattens. Oops. Flattens the back. 
And then I just kind of look around and see if it needs to be melted anymore. But you have to be very careful doing this so that you don't catch your yarn on fire. Been there, done that. There. See? <clears throat> and then it's flat. And you know it's not going to come out then. Because you can never be too safe. down before you flip it inside out again. There. Now your safety eyes are really safe. Now I gotta restuff. Hey yarn bees, I'm back home. It's Mm, about 10 to 12 at night I totally forgot to end my video <laughs> so yeah thanks for joining me today and uh, I will talk to you guys soon um, I think I told you pretty much everything that I wanted to talk to you guys about I can't think of anything else I finished my chicken um, yeah, I think that's it. Okay, love you all. Mm -hmm.